great help. Just have a nap, Cal. You look tired. Yeah, you look tired though. Can you sit? Kelly said. Okay, do you want me to let you out or do you want me to go out? Said. No, nope. fall down. Can you give me five? Oh, ten. Okay, I'll let you out. I can't go out, Pop. It's too cold for me. still get a lot of questions about why you take the bark off the logs before you build the cabin or other furniture or anything out of it. And the answer is that it holds the moisture as well as insects. So you can see this wood that was cut, cut this down about a year ago. Problem with that is that the bugs are already in there and so is the moisture. So top layers tends to be uh, damaged, deteriorated a little bit, and full of grub holes. In a lot of cases, the grubs are actually right in deep into the wood. So as I'm drying this wood out, the grubs will be coming back to life from their do winter dormancy and coming out of the out of the wood. So I want to dry them quickly and get them outside to uh, to debug essentially. But um, so there's several methods to debarking. Uh, a lot of people use a draw knife, and I do too, especially when it's uh, uh, really holding on, when the bark's really holding on. But a better tool is actually this, it's actually meant for this, for debarking. The better way to do it is actually take it off sideways, because then you can kind of get all the way around the stump, or all the way around the log. And uh, of course it won't do it now. No like that so you loosen it up and you can kind of go all the way around and peel it off in one sort of one big chunk like that see where with the draw knife you're just taking a strip off each time
Going on out there. Hmm. You're spoiled, aren't you? Spoiled dog. Spoiled dog.
So I asked a while ago for questions from you guys about what um, you want to hear from me in regards to uh, success in life and uh, success in business maybe or, or uh, how to achieve this kind of lifestyle. Um, and I made the point and I want to continue to make the point that I don't want to sound like I'm an expert and I don't want to sound like I'm preaching so literally just answering que your questions and uh, 
from my perspective, what I think the keys to happiness and success are, because I feel like my life is where I want it to be. I'm finding meaning, I'm finding happiness, I'm feeling fulfilled. And um, if I am, maybe you can, by following some of the things that I've done, or just pick up the odd tip or trick or uh, uh, habit or whatever from me. So just a little bit of advice. So again, tune out if, you don't, if you're not interested in hearing this. This is the My Self Reflections part of the video, so here I go. Answer to the broader question, uh, how do you turn your life around when you are in a bad place that um, you know that you're willing to admit that you contributed to? So there's two ways of looking at, at life and at suffering and at the difficulty of, um, of living as a human being. And, one of them is to assume that life just sucks and it sucks for everybody and therefore it's not worth living. And then the second thought is that uh, maybe your life, good or bad, is a result of the things that you put into it, the effort you put into it or the, the decisions you make and the people that you have in your life and so on. Uh, I think the truth is for me, from my perspective, is that it's a combination of the two things. Life is hard, it's, it's difficult, and it's um, made more difficult by our frame of mind, our perspective. But basically, um, having, I guess, gratitude, appreciation goes a fairly long way. When I lost my business and went from making like literally $300,000 a year and you know building up this uh, uh, value in the business itself, when I got hit with the, by the financial crisis and hit by the result of bad decisions that I made uh, it left me $750,000 in personal debt that I had to get out of and when my wife and I went and talked to bankruptcy trustees at the time to see what our the next move would be what the solution would be or what we should do to to try to resolve the situation they said first of all the type of business you're in you can't uh, declare bankruptcy so that's not an option so taking on that debt and dealing with the creditors is the only way to to resolve it which is going to take time and he said every single client that he's addressed um, that was in a similar situation to that degree ended up in divorce the, the couple ended up in divorce and uh, I could see why the the stress on me was incredible and therefore the stress on the family was was uh, almost insurmountable my wife was very involved in the business, very instrumental in it, and uh, she could see firsthand uh, what kind of position we were in and how hopeless it was. So at that point, we both could have given up, and me as a man feeling like um, my life work was in there, my whole passion was in that, and my, my value as a man was tied up so tightly into that business that uh, I could have felt hopeless, I could have felt that life wasn't worth living and uh, I didn't. Uh, I felt like, um, you know, I woke up each and every day and I looked at my life and I thought, I still have a beautiful wife and two beautiful daughters. I still have three sisters and parents that are living and, and in good uh, health. Um, you know, I still actually was living in the same house. I, we liquidated all of assets. Um, we financed the house right to the hilt just to pay back some of those creditors. We sold off everything, like, literally cash whatever was in the garage whatever we could could uh, sell and, and including parts of the business like those assets I mentioned we sold everything off just to pay creditors and to uh, have living expenses or pay living expenses and um, ended up with almost nothing at the end well no, worse than nothing we ended up seven hundred fifty thousand dollars in debt that I guaranteed personally so I had to pay that and the business was another two or three hundred thousand in debt um, so it wasn't really an option to continue it, but it, the stress on me was so great that um, I carried on doing the liquidation part, winding down the business for three months, and then I got a job with this this real uh, you know, unlikable person. I mentioned him in another video, so I won't go into it, but did that for six months before realizing this was not going to solve anything. I'd be literally never in a better position for the rest of my life i'd never even pay off the interest on the, that debt never mind pay the principal off so i made some major changes but the major the number one change that i made was changing my perspective and changing my um, 
outlook or my or how uh, gracious I was or thankful um, so I woke up each morning like I said I I looked in the mirror and I thought I still have all these great things in my life I'm still physically in the same shape might be a little bit more mentally <laughs> worn down but other than that what's the difference between waking up today and waking up six months prior when I had you know half a million dollars in my bank account and three and three hundred thousand dollar annual paycheck uh, what could I possibly complain about if I had all the same comforts still had a warm house still had food and uh, those people in my life so what was the difference it, it was really just a matter of perspective and and uh, just the extra anxiety of thinking okay now my future is not secure so when I do get sick or mentally uh, mentally or physically uh, ill in the future or you know something happens to me or, or I you know get in an unfortunate accident or something and I've left my family hanging but they're resilient too people are resilient people are able to go on whether you think they are or not and that includes yourself so when these major things happen in our lives like in my case that was financial but it could have been a loved one dying it could have been you know a personal injury that left me in a um, handicap position where I was incapable of doing what I really love to do and things like this um, but there's other things in life and there's more important things in life and there's there's uh, you know you can grieve and you can forever hold those losses in your heart but it doesn't mean you should hold on to them so tightly that they, you forget to live your own life and forget to add joy to other people's lives around you and to me that was the number one lesson that uh, I've carried and I think by applying that uh, principle or applying that, that uh, outlook it allowed me to quickly bounce back I started another business and I grew that so quickly completely different business and a completely different mindset and completely different set of risk factors so I did it smartly but um, we're able to pay off all that debt and to get into a better position so it, it was really the outlook that I had to change first second is habits good and bad habits you can get up in the morning and continue with those bad habits continue to do those things that have not worked for you in the past those things that have taken you down instead of instead of up taking you backwards instead of forwards whether that's you know picking up and opening up those bills and paying that phone bill that's getting out of hand or the utility bill or uh, whatever it is taking control or taking responsibility I guess for every action that you take each and every day starting today make that decision just to address one thing even today and don't put that off and that let that kind of build momentum start you know um, feeling like each and every day you've accomplished something however big or small that um, you can build on it's uh you know it's a cycle and once you get that that feedback once you uh, get that good feeling that you've done something um, that you've accomplished something that you've eliminated some of that stress you've you've um, prepared some of or prepared done something to to improve your future and your future security and your future health maybe it's a diet maybe you drink too much or smoke too much or do something else maybe just this one day if you just could change that and do something different uh, add in a bad habit and eliminate one um, or add in a good habit and eliminate one bad habit or, or, or just do one little thing good instead of one little thing bad or one little thing good instead of nothing that you were that you should have been doing then maybe that's the start of a, a great life um, and that's the way I get up each and every day I have to I tell myself even if I'm not feeling well or not feeling motivated or got depression or something else um, uh, that suffering pain and suffering that were that's inherent with humanity that kind of wants to take over I have to fight that each and every day just like anybody and uh, just say I'm doing something and do something productive today and at the end of the day I'm gonna feel like I'm fulfilled and I took some steps forward I climbed that ladder no matter that endless ladder because it's never there's no top by the way so that's it for this video I'm gonna sign off here so you have a great week you take care and I'll see you up here again at the cabin next week